I absolutely love being able to help people who are at their absolute lowest in life. These were old buildings. Classic when you would think about some place where you would expect a haunting or series of hauntings to occur. I needed emergency surgery immediately. <laughs> and it turned out to be more than just that. This is not mental health. This is something else. I see a person that was incredibly tall. I ran for my life. I saw something that was not going to play nice with me. It threw me across the room. This is real. This is real. Leslie Mitchell has just arrived for her first shift at a regional psychiatric hospital. I was only 17 years old. I had finished high school early and uh, through a variety of bizarre events, um, I ended up going to the University of South Dakota. Hello. To support herself. Good evening, Dr. Jones. The young student has taken a job as a phone operator on the graveyard shift. OK, good night. Working all night long from 11 PM until 7 in the morning, all by myself in the administrative building. Yes, absolutely, right away. By North American standards, these were old buildings. Classic when you would think about some place where you would expect a haunting or series of hauntings to occur. was completely alone except for very random visits from an ancient security guard. I never heard him showing up because he wore these very, very heavy leather but foam rubber shoes. It was very disturbing just to be alone for that long in a structure that large without any other kind of human contact except the occasional wafting through of security guards. I began to notice that it became extremely cold in my area. Now, this is unusual because that building, all those structures were super hot. It was old radiator heating. I can't imagine how many boilers they had, but it was always too hot. The lights above my work area were flickering. I felt unsafe. I felt I was being watched. At this point, I hear very heavy steps coming down the hallway where all the administrative offices were and where they were all locked. There should not have been anyone there. And as I mentioned, our one security guard wore those foam rubber shoes. You never heard him coming. The louder the footsteps became, the more terrified I became and the colder it became.
the, the footsteps stop. I said, who's there? Who's there? Nothing. <laughs> and then I saw a large, black denseness. My heart was just pounding out of my chest. see coming around the corner of a person that was incredibly tall. Had to be eight, nine feet tall. It was absolutely terrifying. Alone at the switchboard of a century-old asylum, Leslie Mitchell gets a terrifying visit from a presence she can't explain. I was so terrified, and my thoughts kept pinging back to, there's a patient loose, there's a violent patient loose, to, oh my God, this is like the exorcist. <laughs> then, as if by magic, whatever it was, had left. And there was also a nauseating odor. My consciousness was in such a state of disbelief and terror that it was almost as if I wasn't in my body at all. I was so terrified. Leslie returns to her station in a state of shock. I didn't tell anyone who worked there administratively, and when the security guard came along uh, eventually during the next hour, the only thing I asked him was, Are we safe here? Are we safe? Has anyone left the wards, uh, especially the continuous treatment wards, the violent wards? He said, no, everything is fine. Either I had some kind of a psychotic break, which was unlikely, or I experienced actual poltergeist activity. For several weeks, nothing out of the ordinary occurs. Leslie manages to complete a course to become a psychiatric aide. I was initially assigned to what we would call a continuous treatment ward or a violent ward. At that time, we're talking the very early 70s, mm -hmm. psychiatric drugs were in their infancy. We had Thorazine, we had a couple of things, but, but not much that could address the violence in patients. There were still straight jackets. We had padded rooms, and until they calmed down, they would stay in the padded room. About a month after I was working on the Violet Ward, around two or three in the morning. I heard the creaking sound of the wheeled office chair behind me. I heard the creaking sound as if someone had sat in it. I saw the chair move 
from one end of the nursing station to the other. My first reaction was just complete disbelief. I couldn't believe what, what I was seeing. Leslie has little time to process what's just occurred. We had had a particularly difficult night with many psychotic outbursts. I had had to inject three or four people with medicine to, to keep them from, from violence against themselves or others. The long shift leaves Leslie struggling to fill out her nightly report. I was sitting in the chair that had moved. I was not sitting where I should have been to write out my stuff. It had been such a stressful evening, and I had to think about how to write all the things that had happened in this chart and have it make sense. It felt to me exactly like a physical person was pushing on the back of the chair. But there was no one anywhere. I was shocked and terrified. The penny dropped that evening. Any denial that I had been nurturing, you know, I had to throw that right in the trash bin. I knew it was real. I knew it was real. Fearing for her actual safety, Leslie searches for help. Something just happened. Something pushed me in the chair hard, but there was nobody there. We've all seen something, honey. All of those ladies had a story for me that was similar. About hearing someone come in and rocking the chair. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with us now in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace. We prayed to Hail Mary repeatedly. Hail Mary, full of grace. I came to realize that we were all living with fear. Hail Mary. Fear of violent events, fear of psychotic patients, fear of being hurt, and now fear of these paranormal incidents. Grace the Lord is with us now in the hour. Poltergeist activity is the term for objects Hail being moved around grace by the spirits. Lord is with us now in the hour. But what we have in Leslie's case is something far more disturbing. This isn't just an object that's moved. She is pushed across the room by invisible hands. A lot of so-called poltergeist activity is playful. It's an attempt for the spirit to draw attention to itself. This, to me, could be interpreted as more of an attack. OK, so why on earth do you show up to work the next day? Because I was only 17 years old and I had no familial support, I really needed a full-time job. And in the little college town where I went to university, there were very few jobs, period, let alone ones that could support you. So I needed this job to survive. Leslie makes the decision to stay at the hospital. It's now the dead of winter. I got a call at my desk from another, uh, another building, and they needed to uh, medicate someone. It was brutal outside. It, it, it would have been really intense to try and go there above ground. So I made this decision to go down to the tunnels and get there that way. I was starting on my journey to the other building. And I began to feel that feeling of being watched, watched intensely. And then behind me, I heard footsteps, similar to the heavy footsteps that I had heard on that first experience as a switchboard operator. I could see nothing.
I heard a growl and again the stench of excrement. Overwhelming. I almost vomited. I could feel the hot breath of this manifestation. I just ran with a complete fight or flee mechanism. I ran for my life. Psychiatric aide Leslie Mitchell has been experiencing increasingly disturbing paranormal events during her shifts at a regional mental hospital. <laughs> Leslie now finds herself in the dark tunnels beneath the hospital. A threatening entity right behind her. Terrified teenager watching something dark and evil try to manifest. How do you know it's dark and evil? I felt it. I felt again threatened. I ran for my life. It was absolutely terrifying. I had never, ever experienced that level of malevolence and fear. Have you ever told anybody this? I've never told anyone about this particular thing. Uh, Why? I haven't discussed it because it really conjures up core fear and makes me feel like a powerless teenager to talk about it. It wasn't terribly long after that, that incident that I no longer worked at the hospital. I tried my very best to put all of that behind me. I know that that place was active. It probably still is active. And there isn't enough money in the world to make me go down into those tunnels again, ever. I'm not really concerned whether or not anyone believes me because there's no incontrovertible evidence that I can present that will make the naysayer or the skeptic open up their mind. All I can say to you is these things happened to me. They happened to me, they affected me, and to some extent they are with me still. This is real. This is real. This is real. Make no mistake. In small town Vermont, graphic artist Eric Perry arrives at a private hospital to undergo surgery. How long has this place been around? Um, quite some time. It's pretty old. What I understood from talking to some of the nurses and doctors there, it was built back in 1819. It was a very old hospital. It actually used to be an old um, sanitarium. So if you were in here, you were in here for a long time. It's creepy. You just get this eerie, spooky, just like somebody's watching you as you get wheeled into the building. But the staff here is really, really friendly, so that's kind of what's important. Okay. 
Eric's surgery is difficult, but successful. Later that night around 2 a.m., when I was laying in bed recovering, all of a sudden I heard the door opening. As I looked over, I could see the nurse come in. Then she started straightening out everything that was in my room. At first, I thought it was just a regular nurse. But the garb that she was wearing was in the 1930s or 40s. Still recovering from the effects of anesthesia during surgery, Eric wonders if he's hallucinating. When she was leaning over me, she was checking my heart rate. She was checking my pulse. <laughs> When she touched me, my whole body went cold. I could actually see my breath coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I've never been so terrified in my life. Private hospital patient Eric Perry is visited by a ghostly nurse in a uniform from a different era. Her eyeballs were totally black as night. It was like black ring, like just coming down through her eyes. She looked like she had been crying for quite a while. When she looked at me with those black eyes, it made me feel like I was gonna die at that point. I wasn't sure she was there to help me or to take me to the other side. Turned her head real quick, looked at me. It was the creepiest thing I have ever seen. I was scared, I was terrified. I felt like I was gonna pass out. I had like three blankets on me and I was still cold from her touching me. I was in shock. I was very much in shock. Hey. Are you OK? Um, <clears throat> not really, actually. Something just really freaked me out in my room. I think it was a nurse with like a, a white apron. I told the nurse on duty exactly what happened. Um, I mean, there's only two of us working in... She said that there was only two nurses on the floor at that evening and that they were somewhere else in the hospital at that point. If you want, you can come sit back here. here come, come on. As I told the nurse everything that was going on in my room, she ran back to the nurse's station. Take a seat right here. She looked at the surveillance tapes to see if I was lying or just coming up and turning, doing something crazy. I think you should see this. She could actually see the door opening and closing with nothing there. There was nobody in that room with me. Then we saw the desk moving. Well, I've seen ghost shows on TV, but nothing like what I just saw. Nothing could compare when you have that experience of that spirit right there with you. Nurse. Sorry. I'm so fucked up. 
nurse is, you know, the one that they talk about. They were talking about this nurse that was going around and visiting the patients and coming into their rooms in the middle of the night. And they said it was the nurse that hung herself in the facility that probably laid her hands on me. She's back at it. This nurse hung herself because she was pregnant at the time. And the doctor that got her pregnant did not want to have the child. Don't say anything else to him. The doctor actually said, don't say anything else to him. They were both scaring me to the point of just frightened of being in that hospital. I wanted to leave, but under doctor's orders, I couldn't leave at that point. I did not sleep through the night. I kept watching out the corner of my eyes to see if something was going to come in my room again, if she was going to come back. She did not return that night. As time passes, Eric's fear gives way to curiosity. It got to the point where I was intrigued. I wanted the experience. I wanted the challenge of finding out if the paranormal was real. Eric gets to know the caretaker for the hospital. Are you sure you want to go down there? He asked me if I wanted to go to the basement of the facility. And he says, you will be surprised what you see and hear down there. Okay. Yeah. You're going to need one of these. I wasn't ready for what I was actually going to come across in this basement. It was very dark, very damp. There was a foul smell in the air. What was this place, man? This used to be a children's ward before it was a sanitarium. Let's go. Wait, wait, whoa. Did you hear that? We're hearing this grumbling, growl, dark voice. Hello? My senses were on a high alert for something that was not going to play nice with me. Um, maybe, maybe we should go. I heard a very small child, mommy. It's around that corner. I, I don't know. Mommy. Mommy, Phenomenon of negative entities and manifesting as children is not uncommon. And oftentimes what will end up happening is you will see or hear uh, different sounds that have already occurred in the space. And the negative entity will actually start to mirror those noises. Someone there. Coming, where are you? Someone there. Hello? I'm out, I'm out of here. Wait, wait, Ben! The caretaker ran out. He was gone. He left me in the basement with this spirit. rolled me across the room. And it was such force, I could just feel the thud when I hit the wall. I was more than terrified. I had to say to myself, I got to get out of here or I'm going to die. No, no, I'm out of here. Wait, wait, man! Surgery patient Eric Perry has been thrown against the wall by a ghostly force. I had to say to myself, I got to get out of here or I'm going to die. <coughs> I knew that I was at death's door with this thing coming at me. Then all of a sudden, the door opened. It was a nurse. Hey! 
I will never forget what I encountered in that basement, and I will never forget what it did to me in that basement. What I encountered was not human. I felt it was a very dark, demonic spirit. When we get a negative entity in a space that has been agitated in some way, even if it's just somebody's presence coming in, what will often happen is that they won't feel any other recourse other than to turn around and attack. So it will, if somebody does not heed the warning, then oftentimes physical aggression will follow. In this case, Eric probably did not recognize the warnings and unfortunately ended up attacked because of it. What I believe I encountered was an inhuman demonic entity that ran roughshod over the children of this children's ward. This experience, along with other events in his life, leave Eric at a low point. I was going through a messy um, divorce, and um, I um, thought about taking myself down to the river and just jumping in. was the nurse that hung herself. You could actually see the dark ring around her neck where she hung herself. Something strange and actually very magical happened in the room with the nurse. It's gonna be okay. She says, you're going to be OK. That was a, something that you couldn't, you couldn't take. It's going to be OK. What happened with her? She hung herself. She was trying to help me understand that suicide wasn't the way to go. It's going to be OK. I felt a great weight lifted off my chest. This event changed my life. What I believe there is a life after death, whether it's good or evil. She was like being a guardian. She was there to protect me, tell me not to do it. I wear my cross around my neck as protection from whatever activities, paranormal or otherwise, go on in my life. Um, I've actually had this blessed to protect me from um, paranormal activity. For the last three years, Alex Heibretter has been working as a psychiatric technician in the psych ward of a busy Pennsylvania hospital. I was really drawn to mental health when I started college, and I majored in psychology. And every class I took, I would just fell more and more in love with it. And being able to have that job solidified my passion for psychology. It's a job that deals with those most in need. It's Alex. As a psychiatric technician, my job is to check on the patients every 15 minutes as a safety check to make sure that they aren't harming themselves or doing anything that they're not supposed to be doing. All right. Is that pillow OK? I'm surprised you're not sleeping. I know it's very late right now. I absolutely love being able to help people who are at their absolute lowest in life. And it seems that a lot of people do not want to help people who have psych disorders. And I really appreciate being able to help them through that trying time. I'm going to head out. You'll see me again in an hour. Hopefully you're sleeping, OK? Help! 
I heard somebody yell, help. And immediately you just react. You're like somebody is trying to hurt themselves or something is going on. Help! Help me! Hello? Help! Help me! The voice seems to be coming from a room with a dark history. Room three. I did not like walking in there alone. This is the same room where somebody committed suicide. The most difficult patients seem to stay in that room. The room is occupied by a recently admitted elderly patient. You have to help me. Please. The patient was very weak, very tired. She was not normally sleeping. She was not eating. She was in a very weakened state. You have to help me. Please help me. There are so many. You couldn't really make out what she was saying. So dark. So alone. Can I have you on standby? Sure, get around. Something is going on with Mrs. Wilson. He comes! She suddenly sat up in bed. And she had been very weak. She wasn't eating. So I told her, I was like, you need to lay back down. He comes. He comes. What are you talking about? <laughs> she just ran straight into the wall. Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson? Please. And she just turned and ran straight into the other wall. You're hurting yourself. Mrs. Wilson. Please help. sit down. a fear that I have never had in my life before. I was terrified. She was on her hands and knees, crawling towards me with a very disturbed look in her eye, like she was no longer there. Her voice sounded deeper than the deepest man's voice I have ever heard. Please. She was speaking Latin. I know she can't speak another language. This is not mental health. This is something else. Psychiatric technician Alex Highbreder tends to a room with a dark past, where her frail, mild-mannered patient bursts into a violent fit. Please, room three, hurry! And closes in on her with demonic chanting. I had seen a lot of psychotic breaks before, and you were still able to communicate with them. This was not the case with this patient. <laughs> She started to fight us, and she started to throw punches at us, try and kick us. <laughs> She's thrashing around on the bed. She is biting her tongue. It's bleeding. She's spitting the blood at us. I did believe at this point that she was possessed by something. 
Possession is when a person is completely overtaken by another spirit. Their soul is just kind of forced out. It's when we don't do enough to protect ourselves spiritually. So we might think uh, negative thoughts, we might dwell on jealousy, anger, all these lower vibrational energies that make us susceptible to demonic spiritual attack. <laughs> It was terrifying. I have never seen anything like this before in my time working in mental health. I've never seen anything like this in my life. We really thought that there was something in this room that we needed to remove her from. For the She normally is so sweet, she can't even move without help. I've never seen her like that. We were able to transport her to a separate room that had a camera that we were able to watch her 24-7 and see how she behaved. I'm watching her on the camera and I can see all of these orbs just fly around the room, really gravitate towards her and linger over her body. Mrs. Wilson, are you okay? And then she returned to normal. Here you go. There you go. Oh, thank you. It was like an immediate transition back to what we knew her to be before this whole thing took place. Here we go. Where am I? I truly believe that these orbs of light were positive trying to go towards her and remove whatever was causing her to act this way, whatever was possessing her, to help her remove that from her soul. He comes. I absolutely believe that some of the most difficult patients that we had were behaving that way because of something in the room. Because if we put them in a different room, their behavior would change and they wouldn't act like that. This room might have been a place which was saturated with a lot of dead or stagnant energy, which over time can become toxic if it's not cleansed properly. I truly believe that she was possessed by something demonic and something that wanted to use her body as a vessel to harm all of us in that building. This dark entity might be responsible for these suicides if over time it's drawing, it's siphoning the energy off these victims. It's causing them to think thoughts of hopelessness and despair, just further making them vulnerable um, so it can claim their soul. Possession changed me because I really became much more in tune with the paranormal. And I would start to question when a patient would tell me, I hear voices, were they hearing voices just in their head or was something in the room with them talking to them? It changed my outlook on mental health and the paranormal completely. It changed everything for me.